So what we're seeing are a lot of changes in the Australian climate as the, as the planet warms. So we're seeing increases in heat waves, um, unfortunately an increase in the fire season severity. So our fires are starting earlier in the year and they're in later. Um, also increases in rainfall intensity and, and coastal flooding. So lots of changes there happening at the moment. We look at the last few years, certainly we have seen some pretty unusual events and they really do fit in with this narrative of a, a changing climate. So, you know, the fires in Queensland, um, very intense in uh, November into December. Then, you know, within a month or two, we had very severe fires across the southeast. You know, fires which burn for, for many weeks and in places which don't usually burn. So you can sort of see our recent experience really is that climate change experience and, and that will continue. We're finding that uh, with climate change, uh, the increasing temperature, is giving us a, um, a greater severity of the natural hazards and, and the events like fires and floods and storms. Uh, one of the things we're finding is uh, heat waves are getting worse, um, uh, the frequency of severe fires is getting worse and also um, floods and storms are becoming more challenging for us. It is a thing we're observing and as far as what, whatever's causing climate change, it's a thing that we as a sector are going to need to respond to. Uh, we are seeing an increasing temperature, we are seeing the seasons getting longer, uh, we are seeing um, more extreme and severe fire events and it's just something uh, as, as a sector that we're going to need to prepare for better. Certainly we experience a greater frequency of events in, in climate change. We're having far more heat days, far greater days over the extreme areas of uh, extreme temperatures. And of course we need to prepare our own crews for that, for how they cope out in the heat as well. So there needs to be an understanding from our own people about the impacts of heat on their body as, as well. It's one of those hazards that people don't necessarily recognise the risk and, and so they continue to do things as normal. So they've always gone for a run in the morning, they'll be keeping that up because regardless of whether it's a, a heat wave. So it's about adapting to that and looking ahead to know when the heat is coming and changing your behaviour around that. So over the last 50 years we have seen the increase of temperatures in more than one degree in Victoria. We have seen the rainfall decreasing by about 15% over the same period. What that means that our fuels are about 35% drier than what they were in 1950. And uh, you know, we can see that in terms of the fire behaviour. So our fuels are drier, which means that we're getting a fire behaviour even in the winter months. What we've seen is that uh, we have a fire behaviour which we would normally experience in the late, late uh, spring. So the flame heights of six to eight metres under really mild conditions. So that, that was the biggest change. Also, we, we have seen the increase of um, fire activity in early spring. So we had a shift from traditional summer fire season towards uh, spring as well, so an early start and then in some years we have a late finish in the autumn as well, the fire seasons extend quite significantly. The extended fire seasons in spring and in the late autumn will push us in, a, in the area where we will have overlapping fire seasons between the different continents. So we, in the past we could bring the resources from Northern Hemisphere, now we will compete for aerial resources but also we won't be able to provide support to each other at the times of need. AFAC produced a discussion paper back in, in 2018 which uh, discusses uh, a range of issues and, and, and really emphasising that, uh, that the science actually supports uh, the need to address issues uh, on climate change. You know, from a national resource sharing perspective, uh, you know, the seasons in, in North America are extending and, and linking up with seasons here in Australia. So longer heat waves, uh, more intense uh, fire weather is, is happening more regularly now. So we, uh, you know, from a resource sharing perspective, we need to be efficient in how we're coordinating resources both domestically and internationally. Um, but leading up to our own, our own season and summer here, you know, during our season, uh, the fires in Tasmania, over 1,200 interstate resources were deployed into Tasmania. Uh, in Victoria there was, there was uh, some large fires and over 700 personnel were deployed in, into Victoria. Uh, so, so, you know, it is, it is meaning that we do have to be more efficient about how we're coordinating and, and working together. So there, there is a large number of different things that we, we're doing as a sector. So one is about better sharing of, of knowledge and our experience is in terms of plant burning. So how we can mitigate uh, the vegetation 
and uh, create less risk through the, through the landscape. We also obviously continuing to share resources with, with other continents, but also share research and knowledge with others. In a, Victoria, we have a program, uh, the government policy called Safer Together, where the community is becoming a part of the decision making. So we working together agencies, working with communities to uh, determine the risk, to determine what mitigations we can jointly take on a private, on a public lands, how we will respond to, to the uh, risks that are increasing across the landscape. And it's uh, the focus is on, on uh, getting the risk ownership, so the shared responsibility, and getting uh, uh, community to, to uh, undertake the mitigation as well with the help of the agencies. I think people wrap up climate change very much around the change in the physical risks and that's true, that's real and we actually we're responding to that and we're seeing that. The other risks though around things like uh, transitional risks, changes to supply lines, changes to structures, we don't, we're not going to be growing food in the same regions of the world for much longer. The migration of people moving away from areas that they've decided they don't want to live in anymore because climate change has made it unlivable. We need to be able to make sure that we're addressing climate change openly and honestly in our own um, strategic plans and in our own governance structures and frameworks.